sharing my experience of life growing up with dissociative identity, depersonalization and derealization, pseudo-non-epileptic seizures, fear of a spirit realm, identity confusion and alteration, and amnesia, disconnect of inner child and teenage parts, malevolent protector parts, and self-destruction as attempted self-protection, getting treatment and learning to heal. I first became aware of being disconnected from my body when I was around seven. I remember looking down and just being shocked that I had a body and shocked that I'd forgotten about it and that I felt so disconnected from it. And I believe I did feel more connected to my body before this point because it did come as a shock. This makes sense that the disconnect from self would go along with a physical disconnect because the body is the subconscious mind. I dealt with a lot of depersonalization and derealization. So depersonalization makes you feel unreal and derealization makes your external surroundings feel unreal. Sound would change as if I was underwater. Voices would sound murmured and I couldn't understand what they were saying. And it would feel like there was fog between me and everything or like there was a clear glass pane in front of me or I would feel as if I was looking at the world outside from within inside my head, uh, just as a small presence in the back of my head looking through my eyes. I would look down at my body and feel completely disconnected from it. I remember being aware of coming to after having been in a sort of trance state and I would realize that I had been sitting zoned out for ages, just looking at a wall, or just compulsively doing self-destructive coping skills like skin picking, and I would come to and just realize that I had been doing things before, but I hadn't been consciously aware, and it would feel like I'd been sitting in a pitch black room. Sometimes I would be sitting in this pitch blackness of my mind, and I would hear talking, and they would be talking between other disconnected parts, speaking to each other. I remember asking one of my caretakers if it was normal to zone out staring at the wall for hours. And unfortunately, this wasn't a red flag to them. They told me, yes, this was normal because they did it too. Now I know that dissociative disorders are often passed on genetically as well as due to environmental triggers. Oftentimes when the other parts would be triggered out, I would be aware inside my head, I would be able to see what was happening, but I would be completely disconnected from emotions, so they would carry the emotional experience and protect me from having to feel it. And then afterwards I would forget about it as if it hadn't happened because it felt like it had no impact on me. Oftentimes, too, I would be disconnected during traumatic experiences and then forget them completely afterwards, only to start seeing them in dreams or flashbacks later, and only then to realize that they actually happened. Oftentimes, with the amnesia, I would have amnesia for the amnesia itself. So I would forget an event, but not even be aware that it had been forgotten. I was completely unaware of the extent of my amnesia until I was an adult and the memories started coming back to me once I was safer and able to safely process them. There were a lot more disconnected child parts and disconnected teenagers that were inside my mind and I would see them in dreams and get communications from them there. I can remember seeing the dissociated parts in my dreams when I was a little kid and I, I didn't really understand their significance to me. I just, I just saw them as random dreams, um, kind of recurring characters. I still didn't know what the other parts were, so I thought that they were ghosts and demons. And when I would hear them talking in my head, sometimes I would think I was hallucinating 
Sometimes I would think that I was hearing ghosts or demons talking to me. I worried that they were coming from an external spirit realm and that I was being haunted. The other parts would take over and control my actions. Oftentimes, when traumatic experiences happened, and they would also come out and control my actions in response to triggers. I used to think that maybe they were demons and that I was being possessed because suddenly another being from inside my head would take over and they were in control of my actions instead of me. I actually used to have dissociative psychogenic seizures. So that can happen with dissociative disorders when certain emotional content is traumatic and not being processed consciously. It can come out as other symptoms instead of being felt as emotions. So I dealt with psychogenic seizures when I was a kid. They happened usually at night. That lasted for a while and then stopped, which I feel thankful to say. I can distinctly remember being eight years old and having the sense that I was a completely different person from who I had been before. Um, I realize now that we, we underwent a, a shift in host in the system and around that time I, I became dissociated from the person that I had been before. The person I had been before got disconnected and held safe inside as basically my inner child, and then I continued on as a new person from age eight onwards. Um, and I just, I didn't understand at all what was happening back then, back when I actually was eight. I just knew that all of a sudden I felt completely different, and it seemed that the memories that had happened before that time, it felt like they happened to somebody else, uh, or like I was looking at a past life. And I felt disconnected from the emotions of the time before too. So, whereas in the time before I felt a lot of fear, in the time after I felt a lot of depression. So yeah, I just had the sense of mysteriously feeling like a different person and having no way to explain it. And there were also other disconnected parts inside my head at that time too. Uh, we already had a lot of others living inside, but that's the first memory I have of actually disconnecting from my previous sense of self into a different one. It was extremely confusing when I disconnected and became a new part when I was eight. Part of me disconnected and I lost part of myself. My inner child disconnected and I felt like a different person than I'd been before. It was really an unfathomable. I wasn't at all sure how to reach out for support about it because I didn't know how to explain to people that I felt like a different person. And all of a sudden I had a different internal emotional landscape completely. The feelings that I had consumed me before were suddenly gone and I had a new different set of primary emotions. I dealt with a lot more sadness after that than fear consciously. I became very depressed and it was basically like grieving myself. I felt as if I had lost myself and I had to grieve that loss. Nowadays I understand that this is dissociation, this is depersonalization and dissociation of parts of yourself. So it's nice to be able to at least have that understanding now. From when I was really young, I can remember seeing the other malevolent protective parts in dreams. And then I remember around when I was eight, they started talking to me a lot more while I was in the external world. One of the malevolent protective parts, winter would compel a lot of self-destructive behaviors uh, as an attempt to try to keep the dissociation in place because the mind can't really distinguish between destructive behaviors done from somebody else or done by yourself. So the mind just interprets it as something traumatic happening to you and that will increase the levels of dissociation. I remember a lot of uh, internal 
speaking, coming towards me, telling me to do self-destructive things to myself. In this malevolent protector part at winter, I used to think that he was just a monster that lived inside my head and wanted to torture me. I didn't understand that what he was doing was actually functional and actually necessary to keep us all safe. I dealt with so much influence from the malevolent protector parts. Throughout my teenage years and my young adulthood, they compelled self-harm and eating disorders. And I was compelled to perform self-neglect and self-abuse, basically neglecting food and water and sleep and comforts and self-abuse, a lot of performing a lot of re-traumatizing actions, putting myself in re-traumatizing situations. And these were all ways for the malevolent protective parts to compel the dissociation to keep us safe because my psyche had become so fragmented and dissociated at this point in order to protect from the traumatic experiences. And so the malevolent protective parts had to keep doing self-destructive behaviors to keep this disintegration in place. Growing up, he would compel self-destructive behaviors and I would listen to what he said, believe what he said about me, and act out what he told me to do. He had a very strong inner critical voice and he would critique me and tell me how I had to act and what I had to do to minimize the trauma from situations. And he protected me by keeping me wary of others and just watching in situations, being a, another set of eyes to be able to be aware of threats, just being a, another mind to be there and help me be aware of threats and how to mediate them. I felt very disconnected from my own sense of self already back then because I was so dissociated and depersonalized and derealized a lot of the time. So I struggled a lot with trying to understand who was the real me. I knew I felt like myself, but I also knew this other person was there. And we both were able to interact with the world outside, so it seemed to me that I was split in two and that there were two people living this one life. I was just really scared of him and really didn't like him and also didn't know what he was at all. I knew he was inside my head and so that really confused me because I would wonder sometimes, is that the real me and am I a false front? Why is there this other self inside my head? I would say I was still out more of the time, but winter would come out a lot during traumatic experiences to protect us. both to jump into fight mode if necessary. And also to shield me from the emotions. So when he would come out to protect us, I would get extremely depersonalized and derealized and not be able to feel my emotions anymore. So that protected me from getting the full brunt of traumatic experiences. And then Winter would compel self-destructive coping skills like self-harm to keep us separated, keep me afraid of him, keep, keep our psyche disintegrated so that we wouldn't share those traumatic memories and we could compartmentalize them within each of us. And it's basically like two people being better than one, two people can carry more than one person can carry. So I was aware of this dynamic all throughout my childhood. I just had no idea what was happening. I had a lot of self-doubt, so I would just tell myself a lot that I was crazy and that I was imagining everything. And I didn't know how to talk to other people about it. I went through some more traumatic experiences as a teenager. And when I was 15, I became extremely depersonalized and derealized. And Winter ended up living our life outside for about a year at that point. Suddenly I was aware that I felt unreal and I felt like a ghost. And it felt like there was a wall between me and the world. And um, 
I would see Winter living my life and I would watch him living my life outside, talking and doing things that I wouldn't do. And it was very strange just watching, watching another person basically living in the space that you were before, watching from inside your head as if you're looking at a TV screen. I still, I didn't know what dissociation was at this point still, so I was just very confused. I thought this other person living my life now must be the real me, and I must be fake. That's what I started thinking once I was living inside my head and Winter was living outside for a while. I was the false front this whole time, and suddenly we were being our real self. This was easy enough for me to imagine because I did feel very disconnected from my own sense of self. So I didn't have a very strong sense of self to attach to, in myself even. So it was easy for me to believe that the other parts were me if I saw them acting outside. So I remember when she being the person living her life outside when we were 15 and made a lot of changes in my life, cut out a lot of people that were unhealthy, reclaimed a lot of our sense of worth in ways that I had been neglecting. So he did help a lot. I was still very scared of him and I thought that he just wanted to burn bridges and didn't want me to have any connections. I didn't realize at that point that he was only against unhealthy connections. So I'm grateful now to him for, for taking over for a while and getting our life sort of to be a little healthier. There were a lot of social repercussions to Winter living our life because he was so different from me. Again, it's a different emotional landscape. The, the different parts all have a different emotional landscape the way that different people do. So for a while it was to other people as if I had changed and I was suddenly different. And I lost a lot of friends because of that. And that's just a, a difficult part of having dissociative identity disorder. The reactions of those around you to aspects of it that you can't control. And I'm grateful now to have understanding, supportive people in my life that I can be honest with and they understand when we are acting differently. Even at this point, even though I was aware of another person in my head and I was aware that they had their own autonomy, I didn't realize that I had dissociative identity disorder. At that point, I didn't even know what dissociation was. I knew that I experienced it, but I didn't know the word for it. When I was a teenager, I was misdiagnosed as bipolar because I started going to treatment when I was 15 or 16. I think 16, and they were aware that sometimes I would act very different from other times, and sometimes I would be very depressed, other times I would be very full of energy, and so I got diagnosed with bipolar and tried a bunch of different psych meds, none of which really helped. and. My PTSD, my CPTSD wasn't detected when I was a teenager. On average, it takes about seven years within the mental health system to get an accurate diagnosis of DID. Then when I was 17, around 18, we got to a point where I had to check us into the psych hospital because my protector Winter had decided that suicide was the best option and I was afraid that he was going to enact that. So I checked us into a psych hospital and it felt more like choosing to lock somebody up before they could commit the murder. I knew that he wanted to do that and I had to lock him up to stop it from happening. So when my protector was planning suicide and I checked us into the psych hospital, I split again from who I had been before in the same way that happened when I was seven. So suddenly at 18, I was a different person from who I had been before. Now I had an inner child self and an inner teenage self split off living inside. 
held there safely dissociated away. And at 18, I was a new person again. I felt very detached from all of the emotions and experiences that I'd had before I was 18 years old. So this was a way for my psyche to disconnect me from the traumas that had happened when I was a child and teenager and allow me to try to live my life as an adult with a new perspective. I still didn't understand what was going on. I knew that I was completely different. I knew that I was a completely different person again all of a sudden. And I just kind of went with it. I was very aware of being extremely depersonalized and derealized. I went through that time in my life just feeling no emotions. I felt completely disconnected from my emotions. And I felt like a ghost or like a zombie or an empty shell, an uh, empty hollow ghost. I didn't know how to explain this, but I got into the point where I was used to my sense of self changing and used to feeling unreal. I didn't know how to reach out for support or discuss it with others, and the change seemed to bring a lot of positives to me, so I just kind of accepted it and went with it. When I went into the hospital as a teenager, I had been extremely depressed, and after I dissociated from my past sense of self into a new self, my severe depression, it was held away in the part that had been disconnected, so I wasn't as affected by it anymore. And this made it possible for me to continue living. We got out of the hospital, having gone in for suicidality, and I felt suddenly better. The emotions that had driven me into that place of having to check into the hospital had been dissociated off and I left the hospital feeling like a new person that wasn't dealing with that anymore. In this way, dissociation was very advantageous when I didn't have a better means of coping and it kept me alive. I was completely numb, completely disconnected. I was on the third sense of self that I had experienced having up to that point in my life. So sense of self felt meaningless to me at that point after having split so many times and after experiencing so much depersonalization and derealization. I really truly felt that I was this empty vessel somehow, like that I didn't even have a soul. I actually thought that I had somehow accidentally been born without a soul because I was premature and put in an incubator. So I thought that I wasn't meant to survive, and I did, but there hadn't been a soul for me. That was my justification for why I felt so empty. I became a lot more aware of the other parts inside my head beyond just my protector winter. I would hear tons of kids and tons of teenagers and some adults, including my inner child self, Sam, that I had disconnected from when I was seven. I could hear her talking when I would do the self-destructive coping skills that were compelled by the malevolent protectors. I would hear this part Sam inside my head saying, why do we have to do this? And telling me not to, telling me to take care of myself instead. She would be very sad when I would do self-destructive things, and it gave me more of a sense of actually neglecting a child when I was neglecting myself. So this helped me to learn to start trying to take care of myself better, realizing that she was there. I really think that this helped me in my young adulthood to stay alive knowing that there was this child part inside that needed somebody to take care of them. Even though in the past I wasn't aware of how to take care of myself and the disconnected parts as well, this is when I first started really trying to. Thankfully, when I was 21, I was able to go to very good treatment. I had a really severe eating disorder and I ended up going into inpatient treatment and then I stayed at that treatment facility doing a partial hospitalization program and a 
intensive outpatient hospitalization program does not only helped me to recover from my eating disorder, but actually helped me finally realize what was going on with me. First, I was properly diagnosed as having CPTSD. And from that point onward, everything started making more sense to me. I did a lot of work in therapy early on, learning grounding skills. I started off feeling extremely disconnected from myself and my emotions, and I was basically dissociated all the time. I did a lot of using your different senses to get into your body and to feel connected to the world around you. I find holding something heavy in my hands to be very grounding, like a, a stress ball. Holding ice can be very grounding too. Holding something cold in your hands or putting it on your face can be really helpful for bringing you into the present and feeling more connected to your body. Also, just being in a therapy setting, in a, a group setting with other people around me, that was the first time in my life I actually had other people helping me out with the dissociation. I would get very dissociated a lot and I would have people around me just be like, hey, you know, just get my attention. And that taught me how to bring myself out of the dissociation and get back into the present having people around to communicate with because a lot of my dissociation when I was a child was formed around not having people outside to connect with. So having people outside to connect with that actually see you can really help you learn how to become more present and grounded. So that helped me a lot. My therapist would notice a lot when I was dissociating and get my attention. And that was the first time I really started trying to stay grounded, trying to, to bring my attention back when I realized that I was dissociated. In the past, I used to just let myself stay dissociated. And this is the first time I started really practicing consciously trying to get present and not dissociate. So uh, grounding, learning grounding helped a lot, using your senses and also learning mindfulness like mindfulness meditation, that helped a lot, um, and deep breathing practices, uh, doing deep diaphragmatic breathing to calm your nervous system, that helped immensely. We would do yoga, journaling, talking in groups, and individual therapy sessions, and all of these things in conjunction really helped me start to feel safer and learn how to get back in touch with my own emotions. So I finally started not feeling as numb anymore. Around this time, I remember telling my therapist that I felt like I had no sense of self, and I asked if that was possible. And this is when they told me that I could create my own sense of self before I believed that I had to go for the rest of my life just feeling like this ghost, feeling like I was soulless or empty somehow. And it was really revelatory to be told that I could consciously construct a sense of self. I know that's something that a lot of people just do naturally and they don't really have to think about it, but it was different for me because I've been so dissociated for so long. This entailed learning to identify what I like, what I dislike. I actually made a list of likes and dislikes and um, started consciously trying to identify qualities about myself just figuring out who I am as a person. And my therapist explained to me how it can be helpful to be curious instead of being afraid, trying to replace that fear that I had towards my internal experiences and the other parts, trying to replace that with a sense of curiosity. And that can happen once you feel safe enough, once you feel secure that you will be supported and you'll be able to face whatever you find with support. So thankfully I got to the point where I was able to feel safe enough in therapy that I felt able to acknowledge my internal experiences. And that's when I started becoming a lot more aware of what the others were thinking and feeling. 
Leave it to the other parts are there so that can make the overall sense of self a confusing concept. It's good to feel I have my own sense of self because that's sort of like a safe base within myself. And even when I'm affected by the other parts, I know that I still exist. Ever since learning how to get more grounded and more in touch with my own sense of self, I've dealt with way less depersonalization and derealization. It used to be really severe and basically constant, and now it's more episodic and not as severe when it happens. So overall, I feel a lot more grounded and connected to the outside world and my sense of self. I no longer feel like I'm watching life through a glass wall or through fog anymore. I feel like I'm actually in my body. And now that I'm more grounded and connected in my body again, I've started being able to feel emotions through my body and I can pick up on the other parts, emotions through my body as well sometimes. So overall, I've seen a lot of progress. As I was working on stopping the self-destructive coping skills, I was starting to become less disintegrated and more able to be aware of the other parts inside. I first told my therapist about Winter, my protector. I didn't know his name yet at that point, but I knew that he was another person inside my head. I basically explained to my therapist that it was like there was this monster in my head that wanted to torture me or hurt me or make my life miserable because to me I saw just the malevolent side of him. I didn't realize at that point that what he was doing was for protection. Thankfully my therapist was able to explain to me that these malevolent protective parts are actually trying to help in the way that they know how. I don't have to be afraid because they're not actually trying to hurt me for the sake of wanting to hurt me, they're just trying to protect me. As soon as I realized that Winter actually wanted to help me and had good intentions, we started building a better relationship. I stopped demonizing him and fearing him so much, and we actually started communicating in a more healthy way as we began learning better ways to deal with our experiences. Winters in my relationship became a lot more harmonious once we started working on learning new healthy coping skills. And once we started learning how to process our emotions in a healthier way, and we realized that we didn't have to stay so disconnected. Learning how to be less afraid of him allowed me to be open to communicating with him more. Once I was able to stop demonizing him, I learned how to be open to a dialogue between my protector and me so that we could talk back and forth and I could figure out more of what he was thinking, how he was feeling. Then I shared with my therapist about hearing a lot of other voices inside my head talking to each other. And these voices seem to have personalities attached to them. I still didn't know what was happening at that time, and I thought that I was maybe just hallucinating, or that I was maybe imagining it all. Thankfully, my therapist was able to tell me that hearing voices in your head can be your subconscious communicating with you. And he told me that it can be helpful to acknowledge what the voices are saying because they can be trying to communicate with you. And so if you acknowledge them, then that allows them to get their message across. I'm really grateful that I was able to go to good intensive therapy. And there I was able to learn more what was happening to me and learn how to take care of the other parts and myself. I'm really glad to know now that the other parts aren't part of an external spirit realm because that thought made them a lot scarier. And understanding now that they're coming from my subconscious, the, the subconscious dimension, it's a lot less scary feeling that there's something internal rather than external. It's really relieving being confused for so long and then finally not being confused anymore. Since then, a lot of my 20s has been 
just getting more and more reconnected with different parts. Early on in treatment, I was still disconnected from a lot of memories, and I was still unaware of a lot of parts. I was beginning to be more aware of the disconnected parts, but there were still many that I had not yet become aware of. At this point, I didn't realize that I had any amnesia. And then as, as the years progressed, more memories from the past started coming back to me and more disconnected parts started becoming more connected to the point that I was able to be aware of them finally. So for the next several years, it was a slow process of reintegration of awareness of different memories and different senses of self and learning how to take care of the other parts and have a supportive relationship with each other. I was really afraid when I first told my therapist about hearing voices inside my head because there's a huge stigma against hearing voices. I didn't know what the voices in my head were. I could hear a lot of them talking to each other. Sometimes I worried that I was losing my mind and that I would not ever be able to be functional in the future. I was really afraid and I asked my therapist if they thought that I was crazy. That's when they explained to me that hearing voices in your head, that can be your subconscious communicating with you. I feel really grateful that I was able to work with a therapist early on who understood about dissociated parts and was able to let me know that what's happening makes sense and let me know that I don't have to be afraid of my own experiences and what's going on in my mind. I found it really helpful in my own progress to learn not to be so afraid of the presence of the other dissociated parts. Being open to the communication from the other parts has also been a really helpful part of recovery because this allows me to know what they're thinking and feeling and what they need and allows us all to become more connected through communication. I have a lot of communication from the other parts through talking in my head. So I will hear a spoken voice that's not my voice and not the sound of my internal thoughts. It's a, a spoken voice that sounds like somebody else. I also have a lot of communication from the dissociated parts through dreams. So far before I knew that I had dissociative identity disorder, even as a child, I would see the other parts in dreams and they would communicate with me there. There's also an internal world that the dissociated parts live in, basically another dimension in the subconscious realm. And I see this internal world a lot through dreams as well. So a lot of our communication takes place through there. Also, I can pick up nowadays, now that I'm a little more integrated, I can pick up on the other parts, thoughts, and feelings a lot of the time, as if communicating with another person through telepathy. During childhood, it's usually very unconscious. You can become more aware of it as you get older and as you move away from the environment that required the dissociation in the first place. Once you're in a safer, more stable environment, then you are able to safely process the experiences that you weren't able to face in the past. And then they can start becoming reintegrated and reconnected to your own sense of self and awareness. With CPTSD and PTSD, this can involve the reintegration of emotional and sensory experiences. With DID and OSDD, it also involves reintegration and awareness of other senses of self. Part of healing is to become aware of the other senses of self and the experiences and emotions that they hold. Learning how to hold those experiences together. The more I've learned how to regulate my own nervous system, the safer I've felt to acknowledge internal experiences. I used to be completely disconnected from emotions, and emotions were extremely overwhelming to feel. So a lot of my early progress was in learning how to acknowledge and feel my own emotions. I found it helpful to regard emotions as neither good nor bad. They just provide information, and I can learn from them. This requires a process of learning emotion regulation, and it can be helpful to find things that are safe emotional containers. So for me, listening to music is a safe emotional container. 
I am able to listen to a song that explains and describes how I'm feeling and connect to the emotions of that song and feel safer than just to do it on my own. So that was really helpful early on. Part of developing a dissociative disorder is having a lot of shame instilled by primary caregivers. When there's a lot of shame, the person will subconsciously disconnect from parts of their self and their experience. They'll hide themselves due to shame unconsciously. When there's conditional love in the primary caregiver relationships, this can also lead to a person disconnecting parts of themselves in order to be who the caregiver wants them to be and therefore get the love that they need. I did therapy when I was a teenager, but I didn't find it helpful because I didn't really feel understood. But I was lucky in my 20s to find a very good understanding therapist who I felt like actually saw the real me, actually saw me for myself. And I felt unconditional positive regard. That's what it's called in therapy. When their, their care for you is not conditional, when you feel unconditional care from this person. And that can be extremely healing in situations of dissociative disorders because one of the reasons for the formation of dissociative disorders, other than genetic predisposition, is conditional love from caretakers. Uh, a baby and a child will need unconditional love from their caretaker in order to develop healthily. If they don't feel this, they will feel unsafe and insecure. Having unconditional care and positive regard from a therapist can teach you how to have a healthy attachment and can kind of fill in those experiences that you missed when you were a kid. And this can teach you how to feel that towards yourself, how to internalize that feeling of care towards yourself. This in turn helps you to accept all aspects of yourself and your experiences. The malevolent protector parts that compel the dissociation can be very scary if you don't know what's going on. I thought that there were just other people in my head that wanted to hurt me or kill me. With dissociation, there is normally a disconnect within the psyche in a sort of structure of polarities. So you'll have, for example, you'll have a part that disconnects that is more innocent and vulnerable. The psyche will disconnect them and keep them inside to keep them safe. And you can have a part disconnect, for example, that is known as a malevolent protector that will compel self-destructive coping skills to keep the mind disintegrated, to protect the more vulnerable parts that are held safe inside. An important part of my recovery in adulthood has been acknowledging and learning to work with these malevolent protector parts thanking them for helping in the way that they knew how in the past. Another important part of healing has been stopping self-destructive coping skills, because self-destructive coping skills will keep the mind disintegrated and will compel dissociation. So you often see self-destructive coping skills present in people with dissociative disorders, and an important part of recovering and learning to become less dissociated is to stop those self-destructive coping skills that compel the dissociation and letting them know that in the present they don't have to do unhealthy coping skills anymore, that we can handle having those overwhelming experiences integrated into conscious awareness, that they don't have to keep those vulnerable parts disconnected for safety anymore. Now I have a lot more of a harmonious relationship between me and the other parts because I've learned that I don't need to be afraid of them and I don't need to push them away. We're actually a lot more functional when we're working together and acknowledging each other and taking care of each other. A lot of therapy has been learning how to acknowledge and listen to those disconnected parts and figure out what they need and what they're communicating to me so that I can learn how to help them and learn how to meet their needs. Learning how to accept some of the different views of the dissociated parts and holding their view and my view together in my mind has helped a lot to decrease tension between me and the other parts. Learning to accept that different parts may hold very polarized different viewpoints and learning how to contain both of these viewpoints simultaneously within your mind. Knowing that even if things seem opposite, it doesn't mean 
that one exists and the other doesn't. Polarized views can both have some truth and you can hold both within your mind. You can learn to be a healthy, supportive person for the other senses of self. You can learn to be the person that you needed when you were younger. And you can learn to reparent yourself. A big part of my own healing has been learning how to be a healthy person for myself and how to give the other disconnected parts inside my mind the love and connection and understanding that they need and didn't receive during childhood. For example, it was not safe for me to express anger, and so some disconnected parts instead held that anger, and I remained unaware of it for a long time. An important part of recovery now has been allowing those parts to feel safe to express anger, and allowing them to share that anger with me so that we can carry it together. And that also allows me to feel it, and in that way I can process it. It's been very therapeutic to learn how to reparent the different senses of self and give them what they were missing in childhood. A big part of my own healing has been learning how to be a healthy person for myself and how to give the other disconnected parts inside my mind the love and connection and understanding that they need and it helps them to know that I will hear them and listen and validate their viewpoint even if I don't necessarily agree with it myself. If you're dealing with a dissociative disorder I definitely recommend seeking therapy and finding a therapist that you feel you can actually connect with and you feel actually sees the real you because this can be very helpful for learning how to get more connected to your overall sense of self and accepting all parts of yourself and your experiences. And be patient with yourself. That's a big thing. Disorders like this are very complex and it can take a lot of time healing. So be patient with yourself and your disconnected parts. A couple resources that I've found really helpful in a world of trauma Archetypal Defenses of the Personal Spirit. Another really useful book is The Stranger in the Mirror. And then for a more in-depth useful text, The Haunted Self, The Theory of Structural Dissociation. And then also Coping with Trauma-Related Dissociation. I hope if you can relate to any of this that you found it helpful to know that there are others going through the same thing.